Hello, and welcome to the history of the USS Voyager. The USS Voyager, NCC-74656, was a 24th century Intrepid-class starship operated by Starfleet. This vessel was made famous for a non-scheduled seven-year journey across the Delta Quadrant between 2371 and 2378. The USS Voyager was constructed at the Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards orbiting Mars and was launched from Earth Station McKinley on Stardate 4803.8.5 in 2371. Voyager was one of the earliest Intrepid class starships constructed and it featured a number of technological innovations that had become available in the 2370s, which included bioneuro-circuitry, veritable geometry warp nacelles, and a emergency medical hologram program were only a few of Voyager's notable technological advancements. The vessel was also first to test the Class 9 warp drive in deep space. With 15 decks, a length of 343 meters, a crew complement capability of 160 crew members, and weighing in at 700,000 metric tons, Voyager was only about half the size of Galaxy-class starships introduced in the 2350s. However, what the Intrepid class lacked in physical size she made up for with technological advancements. Voyager boasted some of the most advanced sensor equipment in the Federation, and was capable of reaching a sustainable cruise velocity of warp factor 9.975. She was further equipped with bioneuro circuitry that contained gel packs with bioneuro cells that organized information more efficiently and sped up response time. The computer processor was capable of simultaneous access to 47 million data channels, transluminal processing at 575 trillion calculations per nanosecond and the operational temperature margins from 10 Kelvin to 1,790 Kelvin. The defensive systems of Voyager, like many other Federation starships of its time, Voyager was armed with phasers and photon torpedoes and protected by a deflector shield system. The vessel's torpedo launchers were compatible with quantum torpedoes as well, with some modulation. Additionally, Voyager carried spatial charges and tricobalt devices, the latter which were not normally carried on Starfleet vessels at the time. Shortly before the vessel's return to the Alpha Quadrant in 2378, Voyager was upgraded with ablative generators and transferic torpedoes, both of which were brought back in time by a future version of Catherine Janeway from the year 2404. These new systems drastically increased Voyager's combat capabilities against the Borg. Borg weapons had a difficult time penetrating the hull, armor, and entire Borg cube were destroyed with only one or two transferic torpedoes each. Borg enhancements Following Captain Janeway's brief alliance with the Borg in 2373 to 2374, Voyager gained access to a large number of Borg technology. During this alliance, the Borg equipped Voyager with modified torpedoes capable of destroying a species 8472 bioship with a single shot. The modifications the Borg made to the power relays on Deck 8 were allowed to remain intact after Bellana Torres noticed that they worked better with Borg improvements. Additionally, an astrometric slab was constructed with Borg-enhanced sensors by the former Drone 7 of 9 and Ensign Harry Kipp. A 29th century Borg drone encounter in 2375 was able to further enhance Voyager's defensive systems, albeit in a limited manner, in order to escape an attacking Borg sphere. Voyager's engines were also compatible with Borg transwarp technology. In 2375, a transwarp coil was used to cut 15 years off the journey back to Earth. The astrometrics lab was not standard issue for an intrepid class starship. 
In 2374, Ensign Harry Kim and Seven of Nine collaborated to construct Voyager's astrometrics lab. The lab sensors measured the radiative flux of up to 3 billion stars simultaneously, and the computer would then calculate Voyager's position relative to the center of the galaxy making stellar mapping technologies ten times more accurate than what the vessel had been using previously. This new technology was used to calculate a new route to the Alpha Quadrant that would eliminate five years from Voyager's journey home. The Astrometrics Lab was located on Deck 8. The Emergency Command Hologram, also not a Starfleet issue, was proposed by Voyager's EMH as an extension to his holo program. In 2376, in response to this would allow him to control the ship in such a situation, essentially functioning as a backup captain. Despite some initial reluctance from Captain Janeway, the extension was completed by 2377 and put into use when the crew was abducted by the Quarren. This prevented Voyager from being captured and allowed for the eventual recovery of the crew. Speaking of the crew, Voyager was launched with a crew complement of 141 stable members, to which added Tom Paris and probably other new crew members specialized to fulfill the first mission in the Badlands. Since Captain Janeway says, I started with 153 crew and lost my doctor, her initial short assignment did not call for a counselor to be assigned. When the addition of the Maquis crew along with Neelix and Kess to the crew complement rose to over 150 in late 2371. The initial transfer to the Delta Quadrant was costly for the crew. Over a dozen crew members were killed, including the original first officer, chief engineer, the entire medical staff, and the transporter chief. However, over the course of the journey, Voyager gained crew members from species indigenous to Delta Quadrant. Seven of Nine also joined the crew after an incident which happened during Janeway's short alliance with the Borg. In 2376, Voyager also received the five surviving crew members from the starship USS Equinox. Several species were represented on Voyager, including humans, Vulcans, Bolians, Betazoids, Bajorans, a Klingon-human hybrid, a Katarin-human hybrid, and others. In mid-2377, Lieutenant Torres stated that there were 140 humans aboard Voyager, i.e. the overwhelming majority of the crew at least was partially human. The Maquis. With the destruction of the Valjean during their first days in the Delta Quadrant, Starfleet and Maquis crew members were forced to cooperate with one another to get their missing crew members back and then to merge aboard Voyager to embark on their decades-long journey home. Captain Janeway granted the Maquis provisional field commissions, with many filling the roles left vacant by the vessel's loss in the initial transfer to the Delta Quadrant. Of several key positions on Voyager that were filled by former Maquis crew members, that of the first officer was filled by Chicote, and the position of the chief engineer went to Balana Torres. By 2377, about one quarter of Voyager Voyager's crew consisted of former Maquis members. What happened to Voyager after it returned to Earth? In the novel series, looking at the events after Voyager returns from the Delta Quadrant, all characters are promoted after their return to the Alpha Quadrant, with Chakotay be Voyager's new captain, Tom Paris, his first officer, and Harry Kim, the new chief of security. Captain Afrisha Eden briefly takes command of the Voyager after Janeway is assimilated and killed during a Borg assault on Earth in Before Dishonor, and Chakotay resigns in grief, but he returns to take command of Voyager in time to participate in Project Full Circle, where Voyager returns to the Delta Quadrant with a fleet of other ships using Starfleet's perfective quantum slipstream drive. Janeway resumes command of the fleet when she is resurrected by Q's son and Cass in the novel Eternal Tide. The USS Voyager makes several appearances in the video game Star Trek Online, set in early 25th century, about 20 or 30 years after Voyager's return from the Delta Quadrant. Voyager is now under the command of now Rear Admiral Lower Half Tuvok and assists the players in two missions, including responding to a large-scale attack by Species 8472 on the Earth's space dock and Quonos. Thank you for watching the history of the USS Voyager. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.